Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be looking at a 1200 watt power station called the Sonic 1200 from Agritech. So let's go ahead and open it up and see what we got. When you first open it up, there is a small box on top and it looks like it contains a uh, cigarette lighter adapter to XT60 and an AC cord. And then there's the power station. And you can't forget the manual. All right, first impressions of this power station. Uh, it looks, um, I don't know, it looks like vintage. It looks uh, almost, I don't know, sleek. I like the, uh, the, round, the round display. Um, I do notice right off the bat that the handle lays flat, so it's a flat surface, so you can stack stuff on top of it. That's nice. Also, there is a symbol for a wireless charger on top. Also, uh, it looks like we have two USB plugs. Uh, they, it looks like they say they're rated for 24 watts. And then there are two USB-C ports that are rated for 100 watts. There's also a button right here to turn the USB on and off. And then there's another section right here for the cigarette lighter port. And there is an on off switch for that as well. So that's nice that you can differentiate between the USBs and the cigarette lighter port. Uh, it looks like there's also a light bar on top. And on top of the unit, there is a light button and an on off switch. On this side, there is a vent at the bottom and also uh, two AC receptacles with an on off button for the AC part. On the back, it just says 1200 watt power station. And on this side, there is another vent and a little flip switch which is your inputs. It looks like there's an AC input right here and a solar or car input, which is your XT60. All right, before we turn this unit on, let's go ahead and find out the physical dimensions. It is roughly 12 inches across and a little under eight inches tall. And the depth is right around eight and three quarters inches. And the weight is right around 21 pounds. Now, before I told you about the outputs of the DC, but on the AC side, this thing can output 1200 watts. So we'll be testing that in a little bit. When it comes to the input side, with the AC input, it will charge at 1000 watts. Now, this unit has a 999 watt hour capacity. Uh, and it can charge from 0 to 80% in an hour, and then it slows down, and then it will charge the rest of the way to 100% in about 1.67 hours. So about an hour and 40 minutes altogether. When it comes to the XT60 port, it can accept between 10 and 24 volts with a 12 amp maximum. So when it comes to wattage, you're looking at a 200 watt solar panel. And a couple of things I didn't tell you about the wireless is that first it's turned on by this DC button right here and that it is a maximum of 15 watts of charge. All right, so let's go ahead and turn this thing on. When you turn it on, you'll see that the display gives you a state of charge indicator and a state of charge percentage, which is nice to see. Uh, let's go ahead and turn on the USB side. All right, when you turn on any of the out ports, you will get a, uh, an hours remaining on the left-hand side, which also changes to an hours until fully charged when you're charging it. And then on the right hand side, you get a wattage counter. So it will tell you the input wattage and the output wattage of any port right now. And also you have uh, indicators at the bottom of the screen, which show what is turned on at the time. So if we turn on the DC side, we do get a DC symbol right here. And if we turn on the AC, we do get an AC out with a little plug symbol. All right, when it comes to the light bar, you get low, high, SOS, and flashing. All right, well, I'm gonna go ahead and start my testing with this. So first what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and plug it in and charge it all the way up to 100%. And then first I'm going to do a DC capacity test using this cigarette lighter port right here. And it will be a five amp draw. And then I will do an AC capacity test. And it will be a 200 watt draw. So let's go ahead and plug it in and see what happens. All right, I just plugged it in 
and you can see that we are charging at 856 watts and it says that it will take 50 minutes to fully charge. And I know that I just plugged it in, but I do notice that the fans don't turn on automatically as soon as you do plug it in. And even though it's inputting 850 watts, it's still silent. So if the fans do turn on, I'll definitely give you a reading on how loud it is. All right, well, this thing has been charging for 10 minutes now, and uh, I noticed that the wattage on the screen has lowered down to about 600 watts, and we're at 81%. But the one thing I did tell you is that I would let you know when the fan turns on, and you can barely hear it. Let me pull up my phone to show you the decibels, uh, and I'm only, I'm less than a foot away right now. So uh, check this out. Yeah, we're hovering right around 35 decibels. All right, I just got done with the capacity results on the DC side of the Agritech 1200, and here's our results. We have uh, 794.05 watt hours of DC capacity. Now, the Agritech 1200 does say that it has a 999 watt hour capacity battery inside. If you divide that out, you get about 79.5% efficiency rate. Now, 79.5% on the DC side is, I mean, it'll work, but it's not the best that I've seen. So let's go ahead and check the AC side. Okay, so the AC side just got done. So let me go ahead and pull off this monitor, plug it into the wall, and that way we can power back up and see our results. All right, so the results on the AC capacity side are uh, 0.76997 kilowatt hours. So that pretty much equates to 770 watt hours. So if you divide 770 by the 999 capacity, you get 77% uh, efficiency on the AC side. So pretty close to what the DC side was. All right, at the beginning of this video, I think I might have misspoken when I made through some of the descriptions of this uh, power station. I think I did say that this thing could pull a thousand watts from the AC side, and that's not true. Uh, in the manual, it does say that you can, uh, the rated input power is a thousand watts, but I've never seen a thousand watts going into this thing. Uh, right now, this is the most I've ever seen, and it's 838 watts, which is still pretty good, but it's not a thousand. And that also might mean that a thousand watts is what's pulling from the actual AC receptacle that it's, that it's getting its uh, power from. Because right now I'm looking at the monitor and it shows 922. If we're getting 900, if we're getting 839 here and we're using 922, that is an AC input efficiency rate of right around 91%. All right, the next thing I want to do is I want to see what happens when you're charging with AC power and you introduce a solar panel. Will it actually, will it actually increase the wattage of input or will it just favor the solar panel or will nothing happen? So let's check it out. Turning on my solar panel and the input wattage is actually going up. We're still accepting 922 watts from the AC receptacle in my house and we are accepting the solar panel as well. So it does dual charge at the same time. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't favor the solar panel. It actually does, it, it does a dual charge. Because now we're getting almost 1,000 watts of input. We're getting 980. All right, I just set my phone on there to see if the wireless charger works, and it does show fast wireless charging on my phone, so that's a plus. All right, the next thing I want to see is to make sure that these USB-C's can actually push out 100 watts. So I've got a USB-C cable here. It can do a max of 240 watts. And I'm going to plug it into this uh, Bouge RV Juusco, which can accept 100 watts. And you can see the uh, Juusco is actually accepting 91 watts right now. So that's, that's pretty good for a 100 watt, 100 watt port. The one thing I do notice about this display, though, is it does not show the out of this 91 watts. It's probably outputting like about a 95 watts or so, but it doesn't show that in the display. All the display shows is the end of the AC receptacle. So once I unplug it, it does show an out 
of 95 watts. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, try to turn on this uh, 10 amp vacuum using the 12 volt DC source. This thing can surge up to like 11 amps uh, with 12 volts. So let's see if it turns on. All right, it did it just fine. And it did show that the output got up to about 98 watts. Okay, now on to the AC side of this unit. The very first thing that I did notice though, is that it does not have pass through charging on the AC side. What I mean by that is you can't take, you can't take your AC plug from your home, plug it in and start charging the unit and then expect to be able to plug in something on the side of the unit and make it work. The AC output side of the unit won't even turn on if it's being charged from your AC receptacle from your wall. Now, if you do unplug this and you have it charging by a solar panel, which is DC, then the AC side will turn on just fine. But you cannot use this as like a dedicated UPS. And if the AC output side is turned on and you plug it in, the AC side will automatically turn off. All right, the next thing I wanna know is if this uh, Egrotech 1200 can actually power my uh, New Wave convection cooktop. Uh, it has uh, variations of 600, 900, and 1300 watt outputs. So we're gonna test all three of those and we're gonna watch the voltage to see what happens. So first, let's go ahead and just start it on 600 watts. The display on the uh, Egrotech shows 620 watts and our kilowatt still has a voltage reading of 120, which is great. And the wattage is uh, between 612 to 616. So let's go ahead and step it up to 900. All right, 900 watts. The Egrotech does show 906 watts over there. We still have 120 volts, which is great and our wattage is right around 900. All right, let's step it up to 1300 watts, see what happens. Because the Egrotech should be able to go up to 1200 without any voltage change. All right, I stepped this up to 1300, the Egrotech still shows 994 watts coming out. Uh, the voltage meter still shows 120 volts. And our wattage is 980. Put it on max sear. There we go. Now the wattage on the Egrotech shows 1263. Uh, the voltage is still, uh, it's fluctuating between 119 and 120 volts, which is still really great. Wattage is 1254. Oh, it looks like the voltage stepped down to 108. Now it's dropping 108, 107. So it's, it's stabilizing about 108 volts, but still that's enough voltage for my, uh, my new wave to keep running without any problems. So let's see what happens when we introduce a 500 watt heater. All right, heater is on. It's pulling 260, 280, so it's slowly heating up. The voltage on my new wave is down to 88 volts and the voltage on the heater is about 87 and a half. But this is actually pretty impressive because usually when the voltage on my new wave gets real low, it starts freaking out like with like blue eddies and stuff like that. It starts beeping and it can't handle it. But the voltage must be so stable, even though it's only 85, 86 volts, it must be so stable that the new wave is still not having an issue. And if you put these two, vi two devices together, in a normal operation, that would be 1800 watts. And it's powering them both, but it's, it's powering them at a very reduced voltage. And then once I turn the new wave off, our voltage is back up to 120 volts. All right, so what are my thoughts on the Egrotech Sonic 1200? Well, it has its good sides and its bad sides. The good sides are, I like how it's very sleek looking. Um, it has all the ports that you could possibly need with the ones that you really don't. I like how it has two USB-Cs that are rated at 100 watts, along with the two USB-As, which I might use occasionally. The 12 volt cigarette lighter port works very well. 
and the AC can power up to 1200 watts and still keep its 120 volts. So that is pretty impressive. Um, also, it's, it charges very quickly. And while it's charging and while it was doing that AC discharge test, the fans were on and they were very quiet. So that's another bonus is that it's a very quiet operation of a piece of machinery. Another bonus is that you can charge it from AC and DC at the same time and it won't, uh, it won't decide which one it prefers. It just uses them both at the same time. So I kind of see that as a bonus. The biggest downside that I can see with this unit is that it does not have a UPS function or pass through charging at all from AC input to AC output. You can't use this as a true UPS source um, unless you're working solely with DC input. If you're only charging this unit with solar power or from your car, then you can do pass through charging to the AC side. Another thing I was a little bit disappointed about is the uh, efficiency of the DC sources. When I did the test on the cigarette lighter port, I only got uh, what, a 79% efficiency rate. And uh, I mean, that's not really the best. I was hoping at least 85. Uh, when it came to the AC efficiency, that was pretty typical for this size unit. All right, so if you have any questions about the Sonic 1200, please go ahead and leave them in the comments. I'll have a link to this item in my description just in case you want to look further into it. Thank you so much for watching this video and have a great day. Bye-bye.